Hello, everyone. Hello to my brothers and my sisters in Christ. It is a joy to be with you this evening. We give thanks to God for the opportunity to be in your presence and to be in the Lord's presence. We will continue our study on the vital, spiritual vital signs. And this time we will be talking about breathing. Okay, always when we talk about the spiritual vital signs, we come to the question that was asked at the Wesley meetings all of the time. How is it with your soul? And so last week, last week we talked about um, the importance of keeping the heart pure and keeping the heart clean and taking good care of it because that's the place where God dwells. This week we're going to talk about the breath of God and how important it is to breathe God's spirit. But always we start with a functioning and an understanding of the human respiratory systems. We know that it is an essential part of the human anatomy. We know that the lungs oversee the distribution of oxygen to the bloodstreams that nourish all of the organs. Your organs aren't getting enough blood, enough oxygen in their blood, in the blood, they will die. So there are two processes that's important to human health. What you inhale, when we spend so much time talking about air pollution and, and how to keep the air pure and air purifiers, because you want what goes into your lungs to be the best quality possible. We also talk about ex exhaling, which is to let the carbon dioxide leave your body. Your lungs are wonderful things. They take in oxygen, they breathe out carbon dioxide. And in the scheme of things, carbon dioxide is what helps the plants. And the plants take in the carbon dioxide and they make um, the stuff, the um, chemical pho photosynthesis and the photosynthesis expels oxygen. So this is this wonderful, beautiful system that God has set up for his creation. And so exhalate, ex exhaling is as important as inhaling. As you know, they have two lobes and their basic functions are to, over, to oversee the distribution. It is a complex and wonderful system, but it gets the job done. There, when we talk about breathing in terms of the spiritual world, we talk about the, um, the there are two Old Testament words that are important. The first one is Neshahama, which is the human process of inhalation and exhalation. But then, the, and the one we will be focusing on is known as Ruach, which means God breath. And that's how it's translated in the Hebrew. It is God breath or the spirit of God. And so when we have conversations about it, it's the ruach that we are talking about. It's that, that's what we crave, is that his spirit, Holy Spirit fall on us, fall afresh on us. So we've talked about the biblical meanings of it. Ruach is the word that we're gonna be focusing on as we go forward. Ruach has been very important to God in the process of dealing with us humans because it is given to the first created human, the Adam, who God breathes into him the breath of life and man becomes a living soul. That's 
how we become unique from the rest of the world, from the rest of the creation. Also, when he did this, he, he breathed into us the ruach or the spirit to the human being and that gave us his image. So now we look like him in the spirit and we have his spirit dwelling within us. And we talked last week about where that spirit dwells, it dwells in the heart. And so this is, this is something that has been going on for quite some time. Okay, but so let's talk about some of the moments when God breathed. We've talked about the creation. We also breathed and we talk about, talk, there's the time where Abraham is establishing the eternal covenant with God. And if you look in the passage in Genesis where it talks about the breath coming between and speaking to Abraham, it is by the spirit of God that Moses is able to deliver the Israelites from the bondage. It is how David is able to craft 70, 70 to 85% of the, the Psalms. It is God's spirit speaking to our spirit. So we also know of Ruach as also the source of God giving prophecy for, for that for those for those prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and other prophets. It's God working through a chosen vessel to declare the wishes and the instruction and the comfort to God's people. It's how, again, it's how Israel got the directions to be delivered from Egyptian bondage. It's that spirit that parted the ocean. It's that ruach that comes to be with us. Now, when we come to the New Testament, the word for breath is also breath, also spirit, is pneuma. And so... It's described as the rational spirit and the power by which the human being thinks, feels, and decides. We as people of faith talk about Numa as the spirit, the spirit of God, God's spirit in us. So this notion of God's spirit being with us, breathing life into us, being a part of who we are is, is centuries, decades eons old God always intended to be in communication with us. And so the Greek, but we, we come to this moment in John chapter 15, where Jesus is about to face the cross. And he says to them, I did not you did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should bear fruit. So the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is meant to bear fruit, is meant to bear godly fruit. Um, and it also allows us to be able to, to speak to the Lord directly, not have some intercessor come come and say, Well, you tell me what God, tell me what you want to tell God, and I'll tell God, and we'll see if God answers. No. We can go directly to God. We are also commanded that we love one another. Understand when we are speaking of God and we are speaking of his love, all of this is done out of his great love for us. Um, and it's not that we are servant. It's not that we're slaves in bondage, but we are free. We have the free opportunity to build a relationship with God. And it is by the Holy Spirit that we're able to build that relationship. And so God chose us long before we thought about choosing him. Good evening, Miss Pam. And so in John 16, it also talks about it being the spirit of truth. This is the same Ruach that we're talking about that we're 
breathing in and speaking forth, breathing in God and speaking out God, breathing in grace after grace after grace. What's supposed to come out of our mouth is grace after grace after grace. That's what's that's the plan. That's how this is supposed to work. Um, when we get to the chapter, John, um, 16th chapter of John, he's now talking to them about the fact that he is going to no longer be with them, but he will send a comforter, someone that will be with him. And he is, know that he is a gift. You see, Jesus did not have to make sure that we had a way of understanding his will and his way. But the Holy Spirit allows us to do that. And it is a gift that is freely given. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to pay for it. It's just given to us. The Holy Spirit is also our guide. You know that still small voice that we talk about sometimes that says to us, it'll be all right. Or that still small voice that says, you should read this chapter in the Bible. Or that still small voice that says, I don't, you're not gonna, don't go to that place. It's not a good place for you. So, it is your spirit, it is your guide, it is also your teacher. And as you study the word, and the word is critical to all of this growth, growth in our hearts, growth in our minds, growth in our spirits, it's a teacher. It will be the Holy Spirit that will say, bring insight and understanding, as the Apostle Paul will tell us in, in later, later times. It is his role as a teacher to help us understand and it this is why it is so important that we continue our study of God's word because remember it is a living word and we are finite people and the spirit will guide us and it can be that the same passage that you read yesterday brings new revelations when you read it tomorrow that is Jesus, that is him being a guide and a teacher. And he's also our comforter. There are just some days in some places and some circumstances where humans won't do it. You need to know that you are comforted by the Holy Spirit. That reassurance, that quiet, calm reassurance that God's got whatever it is you think is so horrible under control and that it will work out for your good. So, breathing in the Holy Spirit, exhaling his grace and extending it to those around you, breathing in his love and extending it to someone else outside of you. Inhaling, exhaling, that is the critical part of breathing, of breathing is spiritual breathing. All right. John 16. And so, again, it comes down to managing what we let in our spirit and what we don't let in our spirit. For example, if you know that a thing is not faithful, loving, kind, exhibiting the characteristics of the God that you have aligned yourself with, it's not for you. You don't have to receive it. You can say, go away, leave me alone, not interested. But if it is of God and God and this Holy Spirit confirms that this is a piece of knowledge that you need, you can receive it. And so it is a matter of what you take in will affect what you, what you exude. 
You take in kindness, you will exude kindness. You take in patience, you will exude compassion. You take in gentleness, and you will be more tender towards those who haven't, who may not necessarily deserve it. And so we as the people of God must think about what we let in our system. What are we taking in? Is it causing grace to abound? Is it causing love to be extended? Is it causing God's grace and love to be shown to someone else who needs to see it in that particular moment? We have to be very careful what we let in our spirits. And so sometimes what you will find and what I'll, I'll just give you my, my honest story. There are times where I have to turn off the television because what's on there is not going to build up my relationship with Christ. And there are things that the Lord has just said, Althea, leave it alone. But it's getting juicy, God. Leave it alone. But leave it alone. Now, in that moment, I have a choice. Althea has a choice. Turn the television off, change the channel, go in another direction, or sit there and poison what goes in my system. We have to be very careful what we let in and what we let out. A lot of times what you will see in the, in the scriptures is it talks about those things that are important for us to let in and those things that are, that are important for us to deny access to our spirit. We take in goodness, we take in love, we take in patience, we take in kindness, we take in compassion and gentleness. We do not exude selfishness. We do not exude hatred. We do not exude anger. And so we have to be very careful about what we put in because it is going to come out of our mouth. What does the scripture say? Out of the heart. Flows the abundance of the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart flows the issues of life. You know, um, this is a connective system. And 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 take please on please understand when we are talking about this, we're talking about a, a complex, well-built system, not just within the human body, but within the growth and the development of those of, of Christ's disciples. And so my encouragement to the people of God is this. Be very careful what you let in. Be very careful who you let in. Because sometimes someone will say, oh, I'm your friend, I'm your friend. But if you notice that their conversation and their actions are not reflecting the grace of God, let them go. If they cannot or will not receive the grace of God after you have offered it, that's not your problem. You've done your job. You step away and you just pray, Lord, so-and-so is having a hard time. Please help them. As simple as that. And cut them loose before they contaminate your spirit. And so this is a process. We have to understand that this is a process. This is from day to day, from minute to minute, breathing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and exhaling that grace so that someone else can see it. And so what I invite us to do is use this as our prayer. And it is, a, it is a song and we've sung it before and it goes, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. 
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Here we go. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And we don't pray any other prayer during the day. This covers it all. Day by day, getting refreshed. Getting the fresh air, the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Day after day, letting that living God, letting letting the, the spirit of the living God, the, the pneuma, do its work in our lives. That is to allow us to be conformed to the image of our Lord and Savior. And then that, conform, confer, that, that conformity and that transformation allows us to be his vessels. And we need to do that because when you are going to be active and faithful in the ministry and in the service to God, it is depleting. And so we must refresh, just like we need a breath you need to take a breath. You hold your breath. Eventually, your body will stop you from doing that. And you'll pass out. And the autonomic, the autonomic system will start you breathing again. So breathing is critical. Knowing that you are receiving the refreshing of the Holy Spirit is just as critical. And we need it day after day after day. And so that is my prayer for you. In this coming, in these coming days. That you would always be. Receiving. And that you will always be brave enough. To exhale. We're giving through loving, through praying, through witnessing. Amen and amen. Hello.